Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and, uh, and Ranking Member. Uh, it's a real honor to now participate in my fourth Supreme Court nomination and confirmation process. And Judge Jackson, congratulations on your nomination. I, I do feel like uh, you and your family have every reason to be very proud. Um, and your daughter apparently has pretty weighty letter writing skills. Uh, um, when we met together, I wanted to thank you for the time that we spent together. I asked about your family. You beamed with pride. And I can understand why you have parents, brothers, <clears throat> I'm sorry, siblings, family members who are public servants themselves, and now you've gone on to do that, continue that legacy with your, in your public defender role and as a judge. You should be very proud of that. And we should also recognize the historic nature of this event, uh, the first African-American female to be put forth for confirmation for the Supreme Court is quite extraordinary. Um, I also want to recognize that uh, when we had uh, the meeting in my office, I asked you, why on earth are you doing this? Because this week is not going to be particularly fun, every moment of it. Um, why, why on earth are you doing this? I mean, you're brilliant. You're well-educated. You're studied in the law. There are so many other things that you could do. Um, and you said that it really is the pinnacle of your profession. And that, and I guess, in many respects, this is a realization of a dream of yours. But I also think that it's probably putting within reach for many young boys and girls, young men and women, the reality that they too someday could be here before the Senate being considered for confirmation to the highest court in the land. So you're not only fulfilling your dreams, you're making the dreams of others appear to be within reach. Um, I think as we go through this hearing this week, we're also going to get an opportunity to, to see the content of your character demonstrated. Uh, I, for one, think you have a strong track record of ethical values, honesty, integrity, respecting others, and endeavoring to be fair, just, and compassionate. You know, confirming a Supreme Court justice is one of the most important responsibilities I think I have as a U.S. Senator. The outcome of our decision will impact millions of lives and the very structure and the future of our constitutional republic. Supreme Court justices must find answers to some of the most pressing constitutional and legal questions of our time. They're confronted with complex questions. Many of them don't have good answers, or at least easy ones. That's why it's critical whenever a con a, we confirm a Supreme Court justice, we understand the nominee's judicial philosophy and then reconcile it with our conception of the best mindset to bring to the bench. In my opinion, a justice's job is to interpret the text and words of the Constitution as written and give them their original meaning. I reject the notion that the Constitution is a living evolutionary document that changes based on the impulses of five unelected justices. A good judge must understand that his or her job isn't to legislate from the bench, and read in their preferred policy outcomes into statutes. If the words of a statute are clear, a good judge will reach a decision based on those words. And those words alone, even if it creates an outcome they may disagree with personally. In other words, in the words of Chief, Ju Chief Justice Roberts, a good justice is one <clears throat> has one job, calling balls and strikes. Nothing more, nothing less. Sometimes that leads to rulings that Republicans like and Democrats hate. Other times it leads to rulings that Democrats like and Republicans hate. And sometimes it leads to rulings that everybody hates. Um, but that's okay. That's really your job as a Supreme Court justice. I had the opportunity to meet Judge Jackson, I said earlier, and I also want to thank you for your indulgence. I may have done my interviews a little bit differently than other ones. I asked some questions and then I had all my staff ask a number of questions. I was quite impressed with how engaged you were uh, with some of the former members of the, uh, of the Judiciary Committee and other staff, and I even scared one person who was just on the job a week and a half, said, you got a question for the Supreme Court Justice? And he had a question, it was a good question, and you were very indulgent in your answer. Um, I just thought you were honest and forthcoming. I wanted you to know that, I've said that in the press. I think that you have the right temperament, just based on how I've seen you react to the questions that are not the questions, but the statements today. And I also appreciate how your unique perspective, your upbringing, your family, uh, and your experience as a former public defender have shaped your views. Um, as I noted during your confirmation in the Supreme Court or to the Circuit Court, 
I do have some additional questions and concerns that I want to ask about to kind of weave, to about what, weave together or reconcile my conception of the, uh, the right uh, mindset for a judge going to the Supreme Court. Um, I, I, I'm concerned and will look into questions over the next couple of days, and I will be here for the majority of the hearing to hear, uh, to, to kind of put together the foundation that I need to make, ultimately make a decision on your confirmation. So as I proceed with the hearing this week, I'll be in attendance most of the time except for breaks, and I'll focus on better understanding your writings. I'm in the middle of your thesis right now, it should be finished by tomorrow morning. Your political activities and opinions with the goal of determining your philosophy and whether or not it fits with my conception of the right philosophy for somebody that I would vote to confirm. I'll listen thoroughly. I'll keep an open mind, as I do with every nominee before this committee. But at the end of the week, I'll ultimately have to conclude whether or not I'm comfortable with putting someone in a lifetime position and whether that person is likely to have the kind of philosophy that I want. I've told Justice Gorsuch, Justice Kavanaugh, and Justice Barrett that I hope and I expected that they would take opinions that would make me mad, and that's okay. I just want to know that they do it for the right reason. I don't want an activist at either end of the spectrum, although I think some people, some folks are okay with one end of the spectrum, not the other. If we're talking about preserving the integrity of the court, there's no place on the Supreme Court for judicial activism, and the best thing that we can do here is make sure that we have justices that are going to be stewards of the Constitution, respectful of the measures that we pass out of here, and call those balls and strikes. So I look forward to the hearing tomorrow. You're going to get a lot of questions asked. I do thank all of my colleagues in advance for being respectful, thoughtful, and, uh, and open-minded. And I look forward to hearing your opening statement. 